Elite Facts presents 10 Most Intelligent Serial Killers. 10. John Christie, IQ of 128. Originating from Yorkshire, England, John Reginald Halliday Christie was born April 8, 1898. Throughout the 1940s and 1950s, Christie went on to murder eight or more women, including his wife, either by strangulation or by forcing them to breathe in toxic fumes, and surprisingly managed to get away with it. How, you ask? Well, he did this by masterfully burying the bodies in his garden and his walls. During a police search, after they had been alerted about the women's disappearances, they noticed a horrible smell of rotting flesh throughout the house. This was not the end for Christie, however. By using his intelligence, he'd managed to frame someone else for his acts, therefore escaping justice for a little longer. Unfortunately, the man he framed was found guilty and later executed. After the arrest and execution of the framed man, the murders continued, which had police speculating they had punished the wrong person. During another investigation, the bodies were finally discovered in John Christie's house. As a result of this, he was found guilty and hanged to death. Christie was known to be a good student and held an IQ of 128, which is classed as above average. He'd even received a scholarship to the Halifax Secondary School, as well as enlisting with the British Army, where he received an honorable discharge in 1919. He also served as a constable in the War Reserve Police during World War II, which he held for four years. 9. Ted Bundy, IQ of 136. Definitely one of the most recognizable names on this list, Theodore Robert Bundy was born in Burlington, Vermont, November 24, 1945. Bundy is known as one of the most notorious serial killers of the 20th century, a charming and handsome man on the outside, but on the inside, a vicious killer. Numerous women died at the hands of Bundy, who is estimated to have killed around 36 women, although the exact number of victims is said to be higher. These killings ranged from middle-aged women to some being as young as 12 and spanned across six states. Bundy was known to kidnap his victims first and upon murdering them would have sex with their dead bodies and would sometimes go as far as to decapitate them. It's said that at least 12 out of the 30-plus people he killed had been decapitated. Once arrested, Bundy managed to escape from prison, not just once, but twice. During the breakouts, he took it upon himself to kill three more people so it's safe to say he was quite the maniac. Bundy's IQ was 136, which falls under the gifted category. He had previously earned a bachelor's degree in psychology from the University of Washington, but also used his intelligence to lure his victims, sometimes faking injuries, other times impersonating a police officer. He even went on to represent himself in court, being an intelligent and charismatic man, he was nearly as efficient as most professional lawyers. But as much as he tried, Bundy was found guilty and given the death penalty. 8. Lawrence Bittaker, IQ of 138. Hailing from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Lawrence Sigmund Bittaker was born September 27, 1940. Lawrence was an unwanted child by a couple who had chosen not to have children. His birth mother immediately placed him in an orphanage, but he was later adopted by the Bittaker family. Throughout his childhood, the family moved from state to state, and Bittaker, in later life, got into trouble with the law due to cases of auto theft, hit and runs, and evading arrest. After his first release at the age of 18, Bittaker found out that his adoptive parents had disowned him and moved to another state. All of these acts in such a short period of time could have potentially led him down this path. It was in 1979 that two men known as the Toolbox Killers were arrested and charged with the kidnap, rape, torture, and murder of five teenage girls over the period of five months. The first man, of course, being Lawrence Bittaker, the second a friend by the name of Roy Lewis Norris. An FBI agent who was assigned to the case described Bittaker as being one of the most disturbing people he has ever profiled, but is still one of the most intelligent serial killers out there, having an IQ of 138. Bittaker may have still been on the loose if not for his friend Roy being picked up for a minor drugs charge. Upon questioning Roy, he told the police everything and even testified against Lawrence, who was sentenced to death in 1981. He is yet to be executed and to this day is kept on death row. 7. 
Jeffrey Dahmer, IQ of 144. Born Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer on May 21, 1960 in West Allis, Wisconsin, also known as the Milwaukee Cannibal, Dahmer isn't so much remembered as being one of the most intelligent serial killers. He's remembered more for the killing of 17 men. These were horrific killings in which Dahmer would pick up male prostitutes, take them back to his apartment, and give them things laced with numerous sleeping pills. During the time the victim was passed out, Dahmer would proceed to kill them, pose their bodies for photographs, and then dismember them in his bathtub. If that wasn't bad enough, he proceeded to take the dismembered body parts and boil them in Soilex, which enabled him to rinse the flesh from the bone. He dissolved the remainder of the skeletons and kept the skulls as trophies, occasionally spray-painting them different colors. But it doesn't end there. From several of his victims, Dahmer would keep hearts, biceps, and portions of flesh in his fridge for future consumption. After his arrest, he was diagnosed with having two personality disorders, coupled with a mental disorder. Even with this diagnosis, the judge still thought he was fit to stand trial, and therefore was convicted on 15 counts of murder. Due to the crimes committed, people were shocked to hear of his genius-level IQ of 144, as his crimes don't fit the mind. In November of 1994, Dahmer was bludgeoned to death by another prison inmate. 6. Edmund Kemper, IQ of 145. It was 1948, and in Burbank, California, Edmund Emil Kemper III was born. A man who may also be known as the co-ed butcher or the co-ed killer, Kemper moved to Montana at a young age with his abusive mother, only to return to California at the age of 15. This would be the first time Kemper would be institutionalized after he shot and killed his grandparents. Kemper was released at the age of 21 after convincing psychiatrists he was rehabilitated. Some people even regarded him as innocent and non-threatening. Between 1972 and 1973, Kemper embarked on what can only be classed as a murder spree. He solely targeted young female hitchhikers, mainly college girls, which is where the title The Co-Ed Killer came from. He would lure these girls into his vehicle, and instead of a specific location, he would take them to a quiet area where he would carry out the murder before taking their corpses back to his home, where he would violate and desecrate the bodies. Kemper was also known to keep the severed heads of some of his victims for several days before disposing of them. After several murders, Kemper turned his attention to his mother, whom he also murdered, along with one of her friends. After committing his heinous act, he turned himself in to the authorities and was found sane and guilty. He even requested the death penalty for his crimes, but this was denied, instead being given eight life sentences. Despite his questionable sanity, Kemper was near genius with an IQ of 145. He used his intelligence to get himself released from the aforementioned psychiatric hospital by gaining access to assessment devices. In doing so, he managed to memorize the responses for each tool and convince the doctors he was safe to be released. 5. Andrew Cunanan, IQ of 147. Born Andrew Philip Cunanan, August 31, 1969, National City, California. Cunanan, perhaps best known for the killing of fashion designer Gianni Versace, was once listed on the FBI's Most Wanted list. Seen by most at the time as a flashy, clean-cut gay gigolo who would frequent gay bars in the San Francisco area seeking out wealthy men, it wasn't until April of 1997 that his murderous rampage began. The first known murder was of Jeffrey Trail, a friend of Cunanan, who he beat to death with a claw hammer. Another four victims followed. One man was found bound in duct tape with stab wounds from a screwdriver and his throat slit with a hacksaw. It was this murder that landed him on the FBI's most wanted list. However, the FBI never managed to catch him as after three months of his killing spree, Cunanan took his own life. By all accounts, Andrew Cunanan was known to have a genius-level intelligence with an eye IQ of 147. He was known in school for being bright, and some even believe he had a photographic memory. In his later life, he had enrolled at the University of California and majored in American history. Fluent in seven languages, he also had vast knowledge of art, food, and fashion. To this day, his motives for this killing spree are unknown, though there are some theories, but Cunanan, unfortunately, can't confirm any of them. Four. Carol Cole, IQ of 152. 
Carol Edward Cole, born May 9, 1938, in Sioux City, Iowa. Cole had quite a rough upbringing. After his father left to fight in World War II, his mother took to having sex with other men. On occasion, she would take Cole with her and force him to watch, afterwards beating him to ensure he wouldn't tell his father about the dirty goings-on. She would dress him up as a girl and make fun of him. It's believed that this abusive treatment by his mother created a great deal of pain and hatred towards women throughout his life. His first murder came after being bullied at school due to having the name Carol. This escalated when he took a boy named Dwayne down to the lake and drowned him. It was regarded as an accident at the time, but Cole confessed to it years later via his autobiography. Throughout the years, Cole had been arrested for attacking couples, burning down a motel, and trying to strangle three different women, one of them being an 11-year-old girl. Cole went on to commit several murders over the years. He would pick up women in bars and kill them, mainly targeting women he believed had been unfaithful to their husbands, just like his mother. At the age of 14, Cole took an IQ test and scored a whopping 152, putting him at genius level. Despite such intelligence, his average grade was a D+, and he only finished the 10th grade. Although this could be based on his mental illness, physical abuse, and drug use. Regardless, he was a very manipulative man. He played this to his advantage numerous times, talking his way out of being caught in the act of violence on more than one occasion. 3. Rodney Alcala, IQ of 160 Rodrigo Jacques Alcala Bucuar, born on August 23, 1943, in San Antonio, Texas. A man known as the Dating Game Killer, who murdered eight women from 1977 to 1979, although the exact total number of killings is unknown, it could be as high as 100. Rodney made a name for himself after he appeared on the popular show The Dating Game in 1978 and actually managed to bag himself a date. By this point, he had already killed at least four women, was a convicted rapist and a registered sex offender. Of course, all of this was unknown to the public at the time. Alcala has been compared to the notorious Ted Bundy, with one detective describing him as a, quote, killing machine. He is said to have toyed with victims, strangling them several times before finally killing them. During investigations, police found over 1,000 photographs taken by Alcala, presumably of his victims. He was classed as an extraordinary genius with the high IQ of 160. He was always at the top of his class in school, had a lot of friends, enjoyed playing the piano, and was even part of the yearbook planning team. Alcala later received a bachelor's degree in fine arts from UCLA and went on to be accepted to New York University's School of Fine Arts. To this day, he remains in California State Prison pending further appeals on his death sentence. 2. Charlene Williams, IQ of 160 Charlene Adele Williams, born on October 10, 1956, in Stockton, California, possibly known as Charlene Gallego, she and her husband Gerald are said to have murdered up to 10 people. They both led very unusual lives, involving abuse, drugs, and alcohol. Upon meeting, they instantly fell in love, and after months of a very unusual relationship, they began their vicious spree. They began kidnapping their victims who they kept locked up as sex slaves, able to use and abuse them whenever they saw fit. These victims would be kept until the couple simply got bored of them and decided to kill them. Most of their victims were teenagers, some as young as 13 years old. While it was her husband who went ahead with the actual killing, Charlene was the one who kidnapped, raped, and assisted in the murders of nine women and one man. Once caught, Williams put the blame on her husband and agreed to testify against him in return for a 17-year prison sentence, clearly showing her skills at manipulating others. Williams was an incredibly intelligent woman, holding an IQ of 160. She possessed a photographic memory and was claimed to be a violin prodigy, being accepted to San Francisco's Conservatory of Music. Charlene Williams was released from prison in 1997 and is 60 years old. 1. Ted Kaczynski, IQ of 167. Theodore John Kaczynski, born on May 22, 1942, in Evergreen Park, Illinois. History will remember this man not as Ted Kaczynski, but as the Unabomber. This is because he would send bombs to university workers, mainly professors who worked with modern technology. 
This sprang from a hatred towards modern technology itself, as Kaczynski thought it would eventually destroy the world. The bombings themselves injured 23 victims, killed three, and lasted for as long as 17 to 20 years. It was only when his own siblings turned him into police that they learned of his identity. He was a mathematical genius, and to keep everything secret, he would write messages to himself in encrypted code. The code itself was so advanced that even the FBI couldn't crack it. It's believed that the reason he was not identified for so long was because Kaczynski would leave false clues in the bombs he'd made. Sometimes the initials FC would be hidden somewhere. Other times he would slip a note in with different handwriting and fake initials. During the fifth grade, Kaczynski took an IQ test on which he scored a 167, a score so high he was able to skip the sixth grade and his junior year. He was involved in the chess, biology, German, and mathematics clubs, and when he was only 16 years of age, he got accepted into Harvard. After graduating from Harvard, he earned a PhD in mathematics and became a professor at the University of California at Berkeley. Ted Kaczynski is currently serving eight life sentences without parole. Don't forget to like us and subscribe for more Elite Facts.